All right. Um, so as you can see, I'm not Paige. I'm a pretty ugly version of Paige. Um, unfortunately, she got sick um, and couldn't make it. So she uh, pinged me and asked me if I'd drop by and, and do this talk. Um, it's, it's one of our uh, uh, talks that we use uh, kind of around the world to introduce open telemetry. It's a very uh, uh, basic 101 talk. And um, anybody here uh, working with open telemetry in depth? You are. So you're just coming to validate me, make sure I'm not lying about what's going on. Anybody here have no idea what open telemetry is? In between, in the middle somewhere? Yeah, okay, good. This might be a good talk for you then. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look a little bit about the foundation of what we talk about when we talk about observability, kind of set the baseline, right? So what is it and what it looks like in the beginning and then what it looks like when you start scaling it massively, right? This, this is kind of a, a, an important aspect of what's going to happen when you start working in the observability space. How many people here are doing observability? Like engineers or SRE. Is anybody an SRE? I always ask that because anybody puts their hands up as an SRE. These are the people you need to be nice to. These are the people you need to buy beer for. How long have you guys been doing it? Several years? Three years. Okay. I had a really funny answer one time when I asked someone that. He said 10 years. I was like, oh my God, how did you handle that? How do you? He goes, well, I do it about a year and then I go become an engineer somewhere else for a year and then I get tired of that and come back every. I was like, ah, so you're like getting rid of the burnout, right? It's kind of a kind of a stressful job. Then we'll get down into the nuts and bolts of uh, uh, open telemetry, what it is. The only thing I'm not going to talk about is, is committing to open telemetry, what the code's about and stuff like that, okay? This is not a, a, a 101 on how to do open source. So this is really on the focus of what I could get involved, such as talking to people, what the different events are, where you could find them, that kind of stuff. So, um... Maybe the SREs can back me up on this. I've always felt like cloud native uh, was was this great big promise, like this ice cream you get as a kid, and then when you start working with this stuff, this is what happens. Am I am I far off? You know what I mean? It's kind of frustrating, right? It's it's really 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 fun when you're doing it at the beginning, all right? You're building you're building these beautiful little container things, apps. You're able to monitor the shit out of them. It's not a problem, um, but it's 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 not reality, right? It's a little bit rougher than that. Anybody here looked closely at one one simple app on a four node cluster? If you Google around online, you can find several examples of people who publish stuff about this. Um, I also put these slides online. If you look at my Twitter feed at all, it's my first name, my last name. Um, you'll see it at the end, and then you can find it. I already posted them online. In the speaker notes, you'll find a link to this specific example. But it's just a hello world. This is a simple web app. It's got a simple script that's pinging it every once in a while so that you can get user metrics, you can get backend metrics, you can get service metrics. Very simple collection of stuff. And it does this for 30 days. And then you added it all up and it's almost half a terabyte of data. Just metric stuff. We're not even talking about the, the production data that you're doing for customers and earning stuff and tracing what they're doing, right? This is nuts if you ask me. I, I come from the half dev side, right? We build so we don't care about this. Never looked at it, never thought about it. Somebody might ask me to put something in for, for, for metrics, fine. If we do that, we don't care. It's part of the functionality we're supposed to build. But wow, doesn't this blow your mind? And then you, you hear about places like Uber where they have millions of these things. You know, what's going on? How are you able to find that needle in the haystack when shit breaks? Ask these two. Give them a beer. Ask for some stories. They have them. It's not just the volume of data. Uh, they did some research, and on average across the world, people doing this, uh, the retention rate is 13 months. And generally speaking, most companies start with a simple rule across the board, like let's just everything has to be kept 13 months. That's just policy. But what about those development environments you have where you do training for two weeks and then close them down, and then you keep the data for 13 months? You're paying for that storage. You know what I mean? Everything through the pipe is money. So water through the pipe costs money. The more water through the pipe, the more money you got to do. How many people are living in Europe right now? About half. So speaking to you guys, it's like your energy bill right now. Right? I hit it. Gone through the roof. Gone through the roofs. It's pretty nuts. And then it turns into this. So those, the, the, that beautiful environment you had, 
it scales like crazy. Whatever happened, you started getting famous, your 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 company's exploded. And what does cloud native do? It automatically scales when needed. And then you end up with all these tools, all these containers, all these things. And then we step back and we look at Ollie, right? The observability. It's wonderful when you have just a couple of things. You can think about it, you can plan for it. Y'all start out with a great plan. We all do. So it feels like a holiday, right? You got a glass of wine, you're watching the dashboards. It's fantastic. And then it scales. And right. And I, I give this talk several times and people come up afterwards. Usually the SREs, even one SRE manager. And he goes, it's exactly like that. <laughs> and I don't want to traumatize anybody here with war pictures, but it's basically, I was, I was looking around for a burned out building. And this is what I found, but it's just, it's so hard to keep up, right? Let's look at why some of this stuff is happening. It's utterly remarkable when you look at this, how many companies have all this data for, for what they're doing with their customer. And then as it starts scaling, all your observability data and your storage and stuff prices go up here. This has nothing to do with making money. This is your burn rate. This is over here engaging with your customers. And they're hitting that point where it starts getting more and they're like, wait a minute, and we got to do something with this. And uh, really shocking at the uh, end of 2022, I saw an IDC cloud report where they said, I think 80% of companies in Europe were looking at doing a FinOps role by the end of 2023. To me, that's panic button. How many people have seen the 80% on an IDC report? And I mean, usually 40% is a trap. 80%, I was, I, I was actually watching this thing on the side while I was working. And I actually did a whiplash thing when I, when I heard her say that. I was like, what? And then who's going to put a fin off first in that place? That has to do with getting control of this. The problem is in an organization, they don't have, you don't know what everybody's doing and they're going to a marketplace and pushing a button. And I got several stories around stuff like that where they decided, hey, we're going to use this load balance. And then they had to add metrics tags to it. It could only support 200. So that means you're load balancing the load balancers just to trace down these tags for a security operation. It's crazy, right? Well, we really wanted something like this. Does anybody know what this is? I'm in Euros. Y'all should know what this is. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So this is a really old city, right? This has been around a long, 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 long time. So this has had to scale and grow. But look how nicely they've done that. This is what we want our observability to look like, right? We're trying to achieve that nice, steady growth. We have organization. We know where everything's at. We know how it works. We can find what we want to find. And we're not spending too much money on it. We're... Well, let's be honest. Nobody cares how much it costs if it's doing what it's supposed to do, right? If I can solve problems faster, if I can uh, remediate quicker, if I can uh, make more money, customers are happy, they'll pay anything, right? That's not the problem. The problem is that, that that's not happening. So let's get down into to actual telemetry stuff and what we keep to talk about. That was just setting the table so you know what this is about and why people start, start looking around at this. So telemetry, this is a definition just to get us all on the same page. Basically about looking out there and collecting, you know, information. So we monitor control systems, correct? Sounds easy enough. Let's look at what we're doing in open telemetry. So we have one expert in the back and the rest of you have never seen it before, but open telemetry, this is a, an open source project that's uh, in the uh, Cloud Native Computer Foundation, of course. The whole idea here is focused on cloud native computing. You'll hear an awful lot about microservices, right? How do we do that? The microservices are being sent out there, they're individual containers, and they're often doing calls that bounce between multiple containers, and you have no idea in the path it's taken. This is set up to be able to trace these paths, to be able to monitor what these individual calls are. So you call it once and it goes ABC, you call it a second time, it goes ADEFG, you know, you never know. I remember very distinctly about 15 years ago when one of my friends was working for one of the very early JBoss projects that did that stuff. And he was super freaked out and frustrated trying to trace this stuff. You know, how do you do that? It's, it's really hard to figure out where stuff went, you know, live and debugging as a developer. That's what this is for. They have a really good uh, doc set up. I'd encourage you to go look at it. It starts with the first question, are you operations focused or are you developer focused? And take you on the path you need to do to go look at this stuff. And to be a little bit big. One thing I say up front, because most people don't catch this when they're picking into this stuff, is it's not a backend. So by backend, I mean this is not the collection and storage of your metrics. 
they're on the front end making sure you can get them off, but then he wants to either push or be pulled from a back end. You can send it to Dorethea's, all that kind of stuff. You'll see, see that listed in there, but be really clear, this is not in the back end. It's not a full book solution. It's just concerned of being able to trace what you're doing out there in the world with your microservice. So a couple of other things you're going to hear a lot about, traces and spans. So to mean it's really important to understand the span by those little units of work that we're defining between this point and this point, this is what I'm tracking. And then we want to do a trace. So if all the way to the collect a bunch of these spans over time. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So we get down into what open telemetry actually has. It's these three things it has a specification. And in that you'll find an API you can work against. You have an SDK in case you don't have the, uh, the language you want to use as a cover day, you can build some of your own stuff around it, but it's been around long enough. There's a lot of them already done for it. It's a whole list of them in the docs. And then they have the open telemetry protocol. Anybody here in architect designing these kind of systems? It's up to hear open standards, right? And that's kind of the, the way you want to be and any kind of special they're putting together. That means if later they come up with better stuff, I'll probably stick with the same protocols and try to continue onward, right? So you can re replace that without having to worry about that. Super important. So let's look at some architectural stuff because we all like that, right? And uh, nobody freak out about the arrows because I've gotten a couple of times that people have asked about the arrows going this way or that way. It kind of depends upon how you're using them uh, as we see more of these. This is taking a big high level view at this where you see your application. Now I'm an old Java guy, so I chose a Java app by default. And you have something called a uh, auto instrumentation library. So instrumentation is when you're inside of that application, putting stuff in place saying, this is where my span starts. This is where my span stops. This is what I'm tracking inside this service, right? So an auto instrumentation is stuff that's been already pre-programmed for you. So you're, you're too lazy or you have existing stuff you just want to turn on. And you put the auto instrumentation in, it does default stuff for that language. May not be exactly what you want out of the box, might be enough. Might be too much, have to cut some of it down. Up to you. You also have an OTEL API you can use, and you also have the ability to SDK in if you want to build something extra or new or whatever that's not existing. And then you have what's called a collector. And that sits next to the application, in this case on the same machine or the same uh, 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 node. And uh, this thing is collecting everything you got. We'll zoom into what that's doing in a second. Now these collectors, when you look at them, you have two kinds. You have an agent and you have a gateway. Now if we're looking at one host, one node, one machine, then you're gonna put an agent on there and you're gonna have your applications on there and they're gonna be collecting everything to that agent. And then you have, as I said, that doesn't have a backend, so you have to push it somewhere or you have to get it pulled, scraped from a Prometheus instance. So, for example, if you're using something like, uh, I don't know, Datadog or whatever, you have to probably push, and uh, Prometheus is a pull. Make sense? That's what I mean about the arrows here, right? So, in this case, you're pushing, but it'd be the other way around if it was uh, Prometheus. Didn't mean to put too much meaning on that. Everybody with me so far? Open standards everywhere. Nice things. What happens when you use a gateway? Now imagine you have a whole bunch of clusters out there or regions or whatever running. Uh, you'll be doing all your collecting with your agents, but your agents need to be coordinated with a gateway. So it'll be one gateway per region. Um, gives you more filtering capabilities on regions and stuff. And we'll get to that in a second. So it looks like it's getting more complicated, but basically it's the same idea. Just one more step in between. Make sense? All right. Now, what's it looks like in, inside this collector here? So you have uh, telemetry being collected, spans, traces being put together. They come in through something called a receiver. So that picks them up. And then you have the ability to do something with the processor. The processor is uh, a really good example is security-based. You don't want to have data being streamed back across regions and stuff like that with privacy information in it or security information in it. So you can pre-filter that before it goes back. You might have just auto-instrumentated and decided, hey, I don't need half of what's going on here. I'm only interested in this, this, and this. You can start aggregating out your, your metrics right there. 
you probably get a little bit of feel if you've done this before. That's not going to scale very well if you have to do that by hand and make all these preprocessors. And then you have an exporter that is passed on to that decides what protocol, if not the open telemetry stuff, it needs to be sent. At that point, you can actually use, there's a whole list of exporters in the documentation. For example, if you're using Datadog, then you have to use a Datadog exporter. If you're using something proprietary, you can build your own. It's whatever you want to do, whatever you need to connect to your back end with it. Any questions about this? Pretty straightforward, eh? Not as hard as you thought it was going to be. So this is a visual thing to get an idea of what these spans and traces look like. Not going into great code detail. Um, you have two different forms. One is like a tree that's being built up as it's uh, stepping across all these services. Our brains tend to work a little bit better here with uh, the timeline. So you see you have a complete trace and you have a bunch of spans inside that trace. So you can see that this thing jumped from B to C to D to E as it worked its way through what it was doing for this application. Not too hard, eh? <laughs> and then you have the ability also to use a Kubernetes operator. Um, so there's, there's predefined nodes that have a collector and auto instrumentation for all different kinds of languages. You just pick the operator you want to use and off you go. Simplest way to get started. Might not work exactly how you want it. You might need stuff that you need to, need to adjust. Might want to make your own. You know, it just kind of depends upon how far you want to go. So how can you get your feet wet here? Um, this has to do with uh, getting started inside of the, the project. Now, as being, as being a, a CNCF uh, a project, um, they, they do a whole lot of stuff within their Slack channel. Um, I just did a real, real quick search on OpenTelemetry, and it's just oodles of stuff you can find in different groups talking about different aspects of this. Uh, whatever you're working on, whatever you're looking at, there's some place you can go have a chat, right? It's pretty straightforward. Um, also advertising for the, the next KubeCon, but we got a KubeCon coming up. It starts tomorrow, I believe, with the, uh, the pre-events and then uh, on to the actual event of uh, KubeCon. Um, but you'll see a lot of stuff about open telemetry there and stuff. You can get down into the nuts and bolts. KubeCon, you'll see a lot more presentations that have to do with you know, doing stuff deep in the code. There's something called special interest groups, SIGs. Right? Um, there's a pretty interesting one going on right now where they're talking about not just for open telemetry, but I thought I would mention it here uh, about uh, uh, talking about the uh, it's an under tag observability uh, channel. And they're talking about doing uh, a query language, so the, the communication language for all this stuff. And it's going to affect everybody inside of the CNCF if it's successful. So standardizing, right? So. You see the OTEL one, you also have PromQL for, for, for metrics queries. You have, you have a couple of standards out there right now, and they may not be official standards, but they're unofficially accepted as standards across the world, right? People are using them for all kinds of stuff. So very interesting to dig around in that kind of stuff. And you, you'll, you, even if you're just listening, right? It, it's not that you have to participate or whatever, but it's just interesting to see what they're talking about and they have meetings. It's all public. And then you also have the end user uh, community and stuff. Um, Anybody seen the one they put about it? I wouldn't even try to put it on the screen, but they'll, they'll do that at KubeCon. They try it every year. Uh, there's one with everything that's, every project, every person involved, every company that's involved. It's uh, pretty much a, an eyesore. But this one over here is just the end user community. That's another way to get involved or another way to uh, see what's going on. These are the people that have, have committed to using it and, and supporting it and, and that kind of stuff. It's also a lot of those. So any questions? One in the back from the guy that actually works with it. Now I'm worried. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for the uh, interesting talk. And uh, since there are no questions, just a, f a few comments, if I may add to uh, your invitation sure. for everyone to participate. So uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, there is the, uh, we are, we're holding the uh, maintainer uh, talk, uh, not talk, sorry, the project meeting. So everyone is invited to come. It's uh, I don't remember the, the time, I think 4 p.m. Um, at the Congress Hall, and uh, you can just come and uh, share how you um, 
or use open telemetry, what you wish to see from that, discussing the uh, roadmap with the maintainers, uh, highly recommended for those who are looking to uh, get involved. That's uh, a good way to uh, get your feet wet. And Thursday, uh, there's going to be the uh, talk, the uh, uh, talk by the maintainers about the project update. So uh, another good uh, place, but this is less of a discussion, more of a formal talk where uh, uh, the maintainers will present uh, uh, the latest on, uh, on open telemetry. So. Uh, uh, highly recommended for those who want to uh, follow up. And on the end user uh, group, there is actually a survey, an end user survey that uh, if you want to, uh, again, uh, pitch in and uh, provide your feedback on how you uh, use, how you want to use, uh, it's still open uh, and collecting the information and then it will be published um, uh, by the open telemetry community. So uh, lots of opportunity to participate. Uh, and um, if you have any uh, other uh, interest, that, uh, I'm, I'm happy to uh, also share more uh, finer grain details if you want to uh, do that. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And I, I don't know if there's any talks at the Open Observability uh, pre-event. Yeah. Yeah. And tomorrow, tomorrow, the Tuesday is the collocated events day. So there is a, a collocated event. Um, I, I don't know if there are still tickets left if you haven't registered, but it's a, a dedicated observability day. I'll be there as well. I assume you, yeah, you will I'll as well. Yeah. So if you are passionate about observability specifically, there's a designated day tomorrow. Lots of conversations about Prometheus, about open telemetry, and many others. Uh, so that again, and, and also during that same day, but not on the observability day, they will have also the uh, maintainers uh, uh, discussion, the project discussion. Yeah, and it's also live stream. So if you can't get in, you can watch it online at home or at work. Did you just say there's no tickets left? Okay, so that's yeah, to be sold out. You can, you can live stream it. Let's try it, live stream it. Yeah. Maybe not participate, but listen in. They're streaming all of that stuff, I, I believe. Yes. A uh, question on the, the, the size of the, the data, because I, you know, I agree that suddenly you know, we have like 500 gigabyte of, uh, of data with the Hello World uh, app and you know, it, can be, it can be huge. But is it that we are now collecting more and that we, we were not collecting anything before, like 10 years ago? Or, you know, I mean, wh why are we getting you know, such an increase in data? And then we have that data, we need to do something with it. Right? And I, I didn't hear much about, you know, actually, ac you know, acting on all that uh, telemetry. Yeah, that's my that's my favorite subject, and not really part of this talk. But <laughs> I did want to lay the groundwork for it. But um, I think a lot of what we're seeing happen is, um, you know, the stuff that's set up by default in all these cloud native environments. So think of the marketplaces and stuff. Um, I used to work at Red Hat, and when I left, I did a talk in the, uh, an open sh OpenShift Commons in Dublin, and it was the last talk of the day, and I scared the living hell out of everybody in the audience with, do you realize when you just turn this on with pushing a button in like a Google Marketplace or in an Amazon Marketplace or whatever, there's defaults, right? Things are logging, things are doing stuff. If you don't look, it goes in, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you're paying for it. It's, it's just running. And everybody's like, I'm a developer. I'm just, I've done it too. I've done a, a, a GitOps thing, right? Syncing these things and all this on, on, a, on a container platform. $800, you know, for a week long of work. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Probably most of it was, you know, I know now, was probably observability data that I didn't even care about, use, or want to know about. Um, one of the things we have in our own platform is a control plane where you can actually physically get a list of what's not being touched at all that's coming into your observability platform, which is like the basic way to get started, right? And it's not that it's completely useless that you don't ever want to have it, but you don't want to persist it. You want to aggregate that away before you have to pay for the persistence, right? Which is what all the platforms are charging you for. And um, you just have a switch you can flip on to turn it back on if you decide you need it later. But finding that you're, you're ingesting 300,000 data points and you're able to build the same dashboard you have with only 305 data points, you know, you figure it out. It's not, not that hard to, to see the savings you're going to have. So I think there's a lot of it is just the speed of execution that we have to do these days, you know, the, the hurry up and get there with whatever we're building, and, and a lot of stuff is just not being touched. It's, it's utterly stunning, you know? I think that's most of it. Another question. With this, it's interesting with the explosion of data points, though. Um, so, open telemetry, how does that factor in or can that be, how does that reduce that or serve as a filter? 
Um, if, if, as you get started with everything, uh, whether it's, it's metrics monitoring or open telemetry, uh, setting it up and understanding that this is there. So like I mentioned, the processors that you can use to, to filter out stuff you're not doing, you're starting to do that by hand. You're going to see as it scales, that might be fine if you still have time and control over it, but most likely that's going to start getting dropped on the floor. <laughs> and so you're going to end up having to find some place a little bit deeper. So one of the things I didn't touch on here is uh, OpenTelemetry does the tracing and the spans, but it can also turn it into metrics to go into metrics platforms and be viewed as a metric. And uh, when you get stuff like this, then you can hit things like our control plane and you know, then start adjusting the buttons and knobs and deciding what you need and don't need at that phase before you persist it, when you start putting your dashboards together. I mean, this with Grafana, though, too, I think, right? Same idea, yeah. Your dashboard is a dashboard, right? It's, it's, you're doing a query on the data you have in the data store. So what are you putting in the data store is where you need to, need to look first. You, know, it, you can put it all in if you want, and that works for a while until you explode, you know, until you actually scale. A great example is one of our customers, DoorDash, in the pandemic. You know, that's like uh, here uh, uh, they have something in the Netherlands called Tausbezor, uh, home delivery for food. And that went through the roof. And they watched their metrics bill go whoosh, you know, exponentially, in like days, you know, just exponentially grow. And that's complete panic. You can bankrupt, bankrupt your company doing stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's large, born-in-the-cloud, you know, companies. They're, they're, they're cloud-native by default. So everything is out there. Everything's ready to go. And, yeah, I mean, everybody talks uh, about, like, doing a, a cap on what your spend is in the cloud. But are you going to turn your company off because it surges? That's not going to happen. That's not how it's set up. That's more for your developers so they don't bankrupt your developer budget. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody cares if you get cut off on Sunday when you're at home messing around with, the, like I was with GitOps, and I do something wrong and explode the metrics cardinality, and there you go. <laughs> That's not the idea. Make sense? Yeah. I mean, sorry, it's a follow-up question, though, but the developers sure. shouldn't even be thinking about this. I mean, he, right. yeah, I mean, this, this is something that should be done. Now, these are, these are your, your yeah. platform engineers, your observability teams, your, your SREs that are, that are fighting with this stuff. That They, they should be able to... Sorry? FinOps. FinOps, yeah, very much so, yeah. They shouldn't even give them the button. <laughs> they need to make sure that button's not available for the developers. Sorry. So what I'm saying is that open telemetry is just the plumbing. It won't solve the issue of the volume. You will still need to uh, employ your own strategy for filtering, for batching, for sampling. Uh, the, I think yeah. the uh, metrics, uh, span metrics processor is a great example because uh, what it takes is that on the 100% before you even sample, you can calculate metrics off of the trace data. Uh, to see the classic red metrics, the request rate, the error rate, the duration, and so on. But then again, you then sample, and you can send just 0.1% of the actual trace data, the raw trace data, to the back end. So these sorts of trade-offs give you uh, observability without the cost of, uh, of uh, the, the volume of the data. So these sorts of strategies, and there's more evolved and more uh, contribute to the community, different processors and different... Uh, I, I was part of the team uh, contributing the, the span metrics processors. So I'm uh, passionate about that. But the more we have a library of, of processors like that, then you'll have more freedom to take off the shelf and combine different processors to find your own uh, strategy. We have time for one more question. <laughs> so. Just in time. Perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, have, are there people that are using OpenTelemetry for auditing? So kind of you have an audit log or some, some kind of set of data you need to have propagated across the stack when you need to check how a certain user is using the software. Um, is OpenTelemetry the right thing to use or like... Yeah. Can we pass the microphone to our expert here? <laughs> I mean, are, are, is it, I can give is an is answer, an audit, but I think it, uh, you've uh, probably seen more of it than I have. So, are you, are you, But you're asking like an audit level question as far as like the assurance level of the data? Yeah, the, the assurance level and, and also kind of does it make sense? I know what I would say, but we have an expert right here. You start. <laughs> the, the way that I see that, it's less about open telemetry and more about uh, the method, distributed tracing in general, uh, using distributed tracing not just for the operational side but for auditing, if I understand your question correctly. So uh, very much so. I actually had a very interesting discussion with the creator of, of uh, Jaeger project. It was also, he, he shared how they do, used to do that at Uber back in the day, uh, and, and that's 
exactly what they did. We do that also, by the way, in our company. So essentially, it's propagating the data. So for example, if you need to, uh, if you have the uh, user ID or the account ID or the customer entity, you have that on the, on the front end side of things, the top of stack. But usually when you go down, you propagate down to the, to the bottom, to the uh, transactions on the database, you can map that. And then when you want to understand, and maybe also, by the way, for, not just for auditing, but also for uh, uh, cost management, for resource uh, planning, you want to see, okay, how much uh, this specific business unit or this specific product line or this specific uh, uh, customer uh, uh, incurs so that we can uh, plan the, the budgeting, cost, resourcing accordingly, you need to propagate this data. And this with the tracing is actually classic for that because then you propagate all this metadata all the way down to the back end, to the uh, database transactions and so on. So uh, I'm all in favor of this uh, practice and, uh, and uh, the <laughs> You, yeah, you I, no, I think you uh, nailed it. So I'm going to just <laughs> leave it there. That's more detail than I was planning on talking about. <laughs> okay. Well, good. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending. And I'm sure you'll be around for questions. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. So thank you, Eric. I'll chat to you. <laughs> <laughs> well done.